This meeting is now being recorded. Good morning and welcome. Um, my name is Chloe Shields. I'm the Senior Associate for Partnerships here at the Global Alliance for Clean Pisco. And I'm Kip Patrick, Director of Global Communications at the Alliance. And thank you for joining us for this partner webinar on communications and digital media. Um, this webinar is really designed uh, for new partners to the Alliance, as well as um, our longstanding partners. And it's part of a broader series that um, not only features a specific tool or resource or engagement activity for our partners, which in this case is our communication strategy and some digital media tools, but also provides a brief introduction to the Alliance um, and how we work, some of the benefits of being an Alliance partner, um, and just some upcoming opportunities that we wanted to make partners aware of. So I'll provide that brief introduction, and then I'll hand it over to my colleague, uh, Kit Patrick, our Director of Communications, for a more detailed presentation. So for those new to the Alliance, our aim is to create a thriving global market for clean cook stoves and fuels. And this is really in response to the persistent problem that impacts nearly 3 billion people around the world reliant on solid fuels for cooking their daily meals. And as I'm sure you're all aware, working in this sector, we know that results in numerous impacts on human health, on the environment and the global climate, uh, local economies and livelihoods, and particularly on women and girls. And so in response to this issue, the Alliance was launched in 2010 by a number of founding partners with a mission to address this multifaceted problem. Uh, so we're working to save lives, improve livelihoods, empower women, and protect the environment. And at the time of the Alliance's launch, we established a goal, we set a goal for ourselves of reaching 100 million households with clean and or efficient cook stoves and fuels by the year 2020. Uh, now in 2016, we're past the midpoint of this goal, um, which you'll see uh, in the graph on this slide, and we're in fact ahead of our projections. Uh, so at the end of 2015, um, we've reached more than 39 million households with clean and or efficient cook stoves and fuels, uh, and that's in thanks uh, in a large part to the work of our partners like you. So. We see we have a ways to go before that um, 2020 target, but we're on track ahead of schedule um, and counting on, on your work and your help moving forward. So how is the Alliance working to reach this 100 million goal? Well, our market-based approach is really built on three core strategies. And I should mention that this approach is the result of a consultative process um, with a number of experts from across the cook stove sector that we convened shortly after our launch in 2010 and really builds upon the lessons learned um, by our many partners over the past decades of their work in the cook stoves and fuels sector. And this approach is built on three core strategies. Uh, and that really drives all of what we do here at the Alliance. So on the supply side, um, for example, we're supporting the development of innovative new technologies through a pilot innovation fund. We have a number of different mechanisms that are helping to build the capacity of enterprises, uh, consumers and fuel manufacturers and distributors. Um, we're also working to generate increased demand for these products. So consumer awareness and behavior change communication is a large theme uh, of our work this year in particular, uh, and you'll see we've re released a number of recent funding opportunities to support some uh, awareness raising and behavior change communication campaigns. Uh, and lastly, we're working to enable markets. So taking on some of those activities that one individual partner may not be able to accomplish on their own. Um, for example, we're supporting uh, the development of international standards to really demonstrate the benefits of these different technologies. We've commissioned and are now seeing the results of some really formative research about the impacts and benefits of uh, clean cookstoves and fuels as compared to traditional cooking. And we're constantly advocating to the international community to really make this issue a global development priority. Uh, and so our communications and digital media strategy that Kip will be talking about today is just one example 
is how we're working to raise awareness of this issue among multiple audiences to better enable markets for clean cryptos and fuels globally. A bit about how the Alliance works. We're led by a secretariat uh, and in-country staff. So our secretariat is based in Washington, D.C. That's where we coordinate a number of our global activities. But we also have market managers leading teams in our eight focus countries, which is really where we go deep with targeted support for clean cooking and serve our locally based partners in those particular countries and regions. So you can see our focus countries on the slide here, uh, Bangladesh, China, Ghana, Guatemala, India, Nigeria, Kenya, and Uganda. But that's not to say that we only work in those particular countries or with those partners. Um, beyond the secretariat, we really depend on um, our now 1,500 partners around the world to support and advance clean cooking efforts. Uh, you'll see from this slide that we work with multiple different types of organizations, uh, from the public, private, and nonprofit sector. This list is by no means exhaustive, and in fact, we encourage you to find and connect with our hundreds of other partners through our online partner directory. So what does it mean to be an alliance partner, and how can you take advantage of some of these opportunities? Well, the short answer is really that becoming a partner is the best way to stay informed and get involved in alliance activities both globally and in our different focus countries. Um, and more specifically, being a partner means access to a number of resources and capacity development opportunities. So our partners are uniquely eligible for our funding opportunities. Um, they receive invitations to and the ability to participate in workshops, events, different webinars. Um, partners get a first look at toolkits, reports, and other alliance resources and materials and receive our monthly newsletter. Uh, in addition, we provide a number of networking and partnership broker brokering opportunities um, by being part of our alliance. Uh, all partners are featured in our online partner directory, which I already mentioned, a great tool to um, see what others are doing and where they're working and connect directly on that platform, uh, as well as providing introductions to donors, partners, or um, media opportunities as appropriate. And that connects to this last point around enhancing visibility of our partners' efforts. Um, so there's opportunities to appear in the partner spotlight of our monthly newsletter, and we're constantly promoting uh, our partners on our different social media channels and on our website. So lastly, I just wanted to highlight a few upcoming opportunities that might be of interest to those of you on this webinar. Um, first, in terms of the latest resources and tools that we have out there, I wanted to highlight our market research toolkit which is the image that you see uh, on the slide there. Um, that was produced in partnership with the WASH Plus initiative to really help uh, cook, serve, and fuel manufacturers, distributors, donors, NGOs, kind of across the spectrum to design and manage their own market research in the clean cooking sector to inform your um, continued or, or future activities. So. This step-by-step -step guide um, really follows the process that the Alliance has uh, used in our focus countries to conduct um, market and customer segmentation studies. Um, so if you uh, want to see an example of, of something similar that the Alliance has produced, we also have recently released uh, consumer segmentation studies in India, particularly uh, the states of Rajasthan and Kerala as well as Guatemala, uh, which will give you an idea of the type of market research that this toolkit can also guide you through and uh, how to conduct on your own. Uh, so those are all available uh, on our website in the resources section. Um, I also wanted to highlight a uh, upcoming funding opportunity, particularly for Kenyan partners. So that's the Kenya Enterprise Marketing Fund, uh, which is open for about another 10 days, closing on the 19th of May. 
Uh, and that fund will support individual businesses to promote their brands and products in Kenya uh, with the aim of increasing purchase and use of cook stoves and fuels in that country. Um, so we'll be awarding grants of up to $25,000. Um, the businesses must match 10 to 20% of that grant from their own marketing resources um, depending on the, the size of your business. So if you're working in Kenya and looking for some um, additional uh, funds to do some marketing around your product, um, definitely check that out in the next um, couple of days. And last, we wanted to highlight a few upcoming events where the Alliance will have a presence. Um, these are both pretty large international uh, events that draw audiences from around the world. Uh, the Women Deliver Conference, which focuses specifically on advancing um, women and girls' issues, will be held in Copenhagen uh, May 16th through 19th. The Alliance will be there. We'll have an event um, specifically focused on child health in Cookstoke. So if you or folks you know are heading to Copenhagen, be sure to check out our events page um, to find more details on that. And then similarly, the World Humanitarian Summit is a large international um, gathering in Istanbul from May 23rd uh, to the 24th. And again, we'll have a presence and an event um, with some partner organizations there. So uh, if that aligns with your plans, please be sure to seek us out at those opportunities. So next, I'm going to uh, turn it over to my colleague, Kit Patrick, our Director of Communications, to provide uh, a bit more detail on our communications and digital media strategy and tools. Thank you, Chloe. And hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us this morning or afternoon, wherever you are, depending on your time zone. My name is Kit Patrick. I'm the Director of Communications for the Alliance. And we wanted to give you a quick update today, a general overview particularly for your, the new partners, over some of the priorities we have, a little overview of the website, walk you through a couple of the specific areas, and Chloe uh, referenced a few of those in her presentation, talk briefly about digital media and some of the channels that we're using to reach our target uh, market and audiences, and then contact information in case you do have any questions following this or any uh, anything you'd like to work with us on. So I'll go ahead and get started. The first thing will be the uh, some of our priorities, and these are there are a number of priorities the alliance is working on. Always focus with a focus on uh, making sure our partners are engaged, and we're uh, communicating with all the correct audiences that we need to. And for this year, we're doing a little bit of something different. It's called mainstreaming, and what that is is since the alliance is and the partners have been working together for about five years. We feel that the sector itself is maturing and becoming a, a much more coordinated and uh, well-focused sector, if you will. One of the things we're trying to do now is taking, now that everyone that we feel has, has a good handle on the sector and what cook stoves and clean cooking is all about, ensuring that clean cooking is a priority among other sectors, and whether that be someone like the humanitarian sector or gender, environment. When environmental ministers, for example, are laying out their priorities for the year, we need to help them realize that without addressing clean cooking and all the emissions that are related to it, you're never going to solve the pollution problem. And that goes for India, China, Africa, a number of different areas around the world. People in health, for example, the same thing goes. If, you're not, if you don't address the, this massive issue that's killing 4 million people every year around the world, you're never going to address and reach your health goals. So one of the big priorities we have is to make sure that all these different sectors are realizing that clean cooking needs to be a priority for them. Uh, changing behaviors is another example of a priority. And you may have seen news or seen on our website that we launched behavior change campaigns in Ghana and Uganda very recently last month. And what this is is once we've felt like there's a market for cook stoves, I mean that there, um, that the cook stoves exist and are on market, we have to make sure that there are people buying the cook stoves so that the market can be sustainable. And that, is, that involves building awareness uh, among consumers around the world that, one, they need cook stoves, and two, that the cook stoves have the benefits that they're promised, and three, that they're actually cook stoves on the market that they, need, they can go shop, look at, use, test, and become familiar with. So as part of that, we launched behavior change campaigns, and we're launching a few more this year, but the first two were in Uganda and Ghana, 
and they involve a number of different activities to try to drive people to purchase these cook stoves. And uh, some of the uh, initial tools we've been using are radio advertisements, social media. These are all very focused to the local markets. And um, we also do those to village and community to community events, specifically working with some of the community leaders to education seminars, exhibits. Uh, there's a traveling bus, actually, that goes along and brings cook stoves and helps people become aware of everything that's on the market locally. And we're hoping to launch more of those later in the year. And, but uh, keep checking our website or let us know if you have any questions about those. And we'll definitely keep those on the uh, event calendar that Chloe mentioned and I'll talk more about briefly. But that's the way we're trying to address some of the changing behaviors. It's, uh, it's always a challenge when it comes to cook stoves. And the third priority is I want to talk about is empowering, and that's where all, that's where you all come in, and that's one of the goals of the alliance, obviously, is to make sure that the sector is very well supportive, and that includes partners, advocates, entrepreneurs, consumers, anybody who we can help get to a better place, uh, build a better business, sell more cook stoves, begin using the cook stoves more often, and talking more about it to their friends or colleagues or, or community members, and just making sure everyone is educated in that. And um, with all the information they need to do their jobs better and to reach our shared goal of 100 million cook stoves by 2020. That's what empowering is all about and give you the support, the tools, and information you need, whether it's through grant funding, through additional resources I'll talk about briefly. But that's that's what that means by empowering. So those are three of the priorities we're working on. There are a number of others, but those are probably the most uh, germane to our conversation today. One of those, and I'll get into some specifics now about communications and digital resources I was talking about. The first one probably and maybe most well known is the Alliance website. A lot of you probably have seen this already. Uh, maybe you're becoming familiar with it. I want to talk briefly about some of the specific areas. And what I'm showing you is the front page of the website. And I just wanted to walk around. I'm assuming since you're new partners, you may not be intimately familiar with the website yet. But some of the main sections I wanted to show you first is the big uh, banner section on front that changes fairly often and it points to uh, a topic that ideally is related to the big news of the day and this was a picture of the website around COP and the signing of the Paris Agreement which was all about climate so we wanted a big focus of the website to be all about climate and how people could learn more about climate. So that section is going to change fairly often but that's what that's what that is and clicking on that will take you through to a page where you can learn more about how uh, uh, clean cook stoves can impact and improve climate. Uh, then there'll be focus features down below, some news articles. I'm not going to scroll down further, but below that is some of the more recent news and, and hot topics. For example, the uh, biggest news we've heard recently is uh, Prime Minister Modi's plan to uh, provide cooking gas connections to 50 million poor households in India. And that's major news for not only for the people in India, but also for the cook stove sector because it's a – Probably it's an unprecedented, but it's also the largest uh, campaign to connect people with clean cooking fuels. So it's going to be really interesting, one, to see how it goes locally, and two, the, some of the behavior change and broad health, climate, and otherwise benefits that's, that are going to be delivered through those. So we'll be keeping a big eye, a close eye on that, as will many, many people around the world. But more broadly, on the website itself, on the, if you look up on the, by the logo on the top left, off to your right, you can see country profiles that will give you specific information and data on on the, all the countries that the Alliance works in and, and a few, quite a few others as well, whether it's be a usage um, of stoves, clean fuels, and a lot of specific data about how many people are impacted. So that kind of information is, information is there. Impact areas, we talked about health, environment, climate, gender, humanity, and humanitarian. There's a de there are details in there, research and evaluation, so it keeps going to technology and fuels, market development, and about. So that's a general uh, overview of those hot topics, leading topics there. Above that, though, is specific areas I'm going to talk more about, and actually the most popular page on our website is found in that top area in the small gray writing just at the very top of the screen there. You, you see news, events, funding opportunities, partners, and resources and jobs. So some of you may not be surprised or maybe you will to know that uh, funding opportunities is uh, probably the most popular place on the website. 
And that is because that's one of the great ways the Alliance and many of its partners and funders are able to support the sector. And um, you'll see there when you click through that page a listing of some of the most current funding opportunities that are available. And it, it could be locally in a focus country. It could be globally. And it could be a very small grant. It could be a large grant. It's, it includes Alliance-specific grants, such as the Women's Empowerment Fund, which recently closed. Some, a SPARC grants all come up here, but also local country-specific grants that you'll read that may, may or may not have anything directly related to the Alliance, but they can still help uh, partners and others with their funding challenges. And then um, going back to the uh, the second most visited page is probably the events page, depending on month to month. And Chloe touched on some of the upcoming major events. And there's a lot, there's a, the Wind Deliver on, from May 15th to 16th, or 15th to 18th, I think, coming up. You'll see in Copenhagen, those types of events are all listed here. Both one, to make sure everyone is aware of what the Alliance is doing, but two, to make sure that they're aware far in advance and they can plan ahead if there's an event in their area or if there's an event in a sector that they would like to engage in and work around that they can either get engaged directly or contact the Alliance and learn more about what we're doing and maybe there could be a, a opportunity to partner. So that's the, the event section. If you ever have an event or a funding opportunity and you want us to post it on the website, please send us an email. That'd be great. We're always happy to get information because that's one of our goals is to support the sector and by the only way we're able to stay smart is from partners like you who provide us with all the latest information from the field that they think they can know learn about. One of the other big resources we have in communications is the newsletter. And hopefully everyone on the phone has signed up. If you're not, I really encourage you to sign up. It's a great resource that focuses on and gives uh, detailed information all about uh, what Rana, our CEO, the CEO of the Alliance is seeing both from the month past or the month ahead. So it's a great opportunity to get a forecast on what the major priorities are coming up for the Alliance and also for the sector. But then broadly, the hottest topics in news, for example, a WHO report came out last month that, that made some big news. Um, there's an SNV study that came out recently. So it's, it's a good opportunity to get updated on not only what the Alliance is doing, but what, what's happening in the sector. And then more specifically related to your work, the opportunities to promote partners, uh, to also talk about any big news or announcements you have coming up, if there's a major hap happening or campaign launching in your area, your, your focus country, let us know, and we'd love to try to include that. As you can imagine, we do get a lot of um, a lot of information every month, so we're not always able to include everything, but we do try to put in as much information as possible without making it too uh, overcrowded. And I mentioned signing up to the newsletter. If you are not signed up on the front page of the website, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom right, you'll see a small box, which I've posted on the on this slide, and it just says newsletter sign up, and you should just be able to enter your email, click on sign up, and it'll take you to, to the sign up page, and then you should be good to go and all logged in. And the, the newsletter goes out toward the end of every month, so the next one should be going out the week of the 24th, 25th. At the uh, end of May. So that's it for the newsletter. I think now we're going to get into uh, social media. And again, this is a very broad overview, but we just wanted to get, make you aware of what tools we have and what tools and channels we're trying to use to, to keep our audiences updated. We, of course, use Twitter, which on the right you'll see it at Cookstoves. We post a lot of social media there, a lot of share graphics. We also try to retweet and post any interesting information that may or may not be also in the newsletter, but it's a great way to keep up, keep more up to date, uh, in a, I guess an up to the minute fashion than the newsletter itself. And it's a lot more there. Uh, we have, I think, around 9,000 followers, which is great. We're hoping to reach 10 or 12 by the end of this year. And thanks to all of you for following us on, on Twitter and social media. Facebook is also another one that I think a lot of partners and people use around the world. And it is kept up to date, not quite as current as Twitter, which is much more uh, busy or uh, updated regularly. But Facebook is more headline news and a good way to communicate back and forth with the Alliance. 
And on the left is one small slide. It's a share graphic, we call it. And these types of graphics go up and are good education tools that, one, we can use to post on our social media, but it's also great for our partners and others to see them and repost and help spread the word far beyond the um, cook stove sector. So those are two of our channels. Here's some specific information on the channels themselves if you want to sign up. If you're not, uh, obviously, cook stoves, Facebook, and the Alliance has a YouTube channel. It's not as – we're hoping to make it a lot more <laughs> – or I guess deliver a lot more content than it currently has. So if you do know any videos or other great work or digital resources that we might lean on, feel free to send them our way. And I'll talk a little bit more specifically about those resources that we're looking for. And these, are, these can go two ways. One is if you have great opportunities or tools or resources that you think we might use or you would like us to promote, always feel free to send those to us. On the other hand, if you ever need some of these things, a lot of these are available on our website. Um, searching our website, you can find many, many things, digital content, share graphics, photos, videos, research. We try as much as possible to post everything we have publicly so you can use it, reuse it as you need to. But if there's something specifically you need for a presentation, for example, or for a campaign, let us know, and we'll try to help you as much as possible. Uh, we have tons of fact sheets, newsletters, uh, articles, presentations, uh, let us know, and Corey mentioned some of those too. Is those are always available, and uh, we're happy to work with you as, as much as possible. And if you have, if you need any communications input or support, let us know. We'll try to help you as much as possible too. There are a lot of partners, but uh, again, that's one of our goals, one of our priorities for the year and every year is to make sure our partners have the resources they need to to do your jobs better. Communications contact. Here's my contact information. If you ever need it, feel free to email me, call me, uh, follow me on Twitter whatever way you feel is most um, accessible and convenient for you, send me a note. I'm happy to connect. We, as you can imagine, everyone gets a lot of emails, but uh, we do our best to respond very quickly and uh, meet our partner's needs as quickly as possible. I think on that, we just wanted to give a quick overview of some of the ways we do communicate and the resources we're using online and on digital media. Uh, I think I'll, that's it from my side. And we'll turn it over back to Chloe for any follow-up. Thanks, Kip. Um, so we really just had a brief presentation for you today and um, wanted to leave some time for questions. Um, so I think we'll pause now. Um, if you have any questions, comments, um, something you would like a bit more information on that was touched on during the presentation, um, Feel free to type that into the public chat window in the bottom left-hand corner of the page, uh, and we'll stay tuned um, for your questions, read them aloud, and, and answer them in the next um, 15, 20 minutes or so. So thank you.
So that concludes our presentation uh, for this morning. Again, we're here to answer any questions or clarifications that you might have. Um, if you don't have any questions, though, you know, you're welcome to, to take off. That's all um, that we had planned on for the presentation component. So thank you for joining. And um, anything else you want to speak about, please feel free to type that into the chat window, and we'll stay online for the next 10 or 15 minutes. Thanks.